Many people give up on the one yard line. See, life is not just that simple. It's not that cut and dry. And that's why most people never realize their personal greatness because they're casual about life. And when you're casual about life, you will end up a casualty. You can't get out of something, something that you're not willing to put into it. You have to put your everything, your mind, your energy, your effort, your discipline. Nothing is going to jump out the fire. If you don't throw something in there, it's not going to happen. It's a commitment. It's not a feeling. You do it because you're supposed to. Try your best to trust God. Trust God's timing. And when he is sending you bold signs and wonders, use those as confirmation. When God is trying to steer you in a particular direction, it's like little pieces of popcorn down a hallway. And at some point, you're going to get to that whole bucket. Love yourself. Make caring for you the highest priority in your life. Look out for what truly satisfies you. We're not taught to look out for ourselves. We're not taught to take care of ourselves, to become sensitive to our wants, our desires. So make a conscious effort. Make you number one priority. Your health is more important than your family and any and everybody. Because if you don't have your health, you can't serve anybody. Don't neglect yourself. Greatness takes tremendous focus. It takes decisions that you make and you can't always have everybody approving of what you know you're supposed to do. And the sooner you understand that, the sooner you'll do great in life. You cannot have the approval of everyone and be great. You're always going to live your life at the lowest common denominator of your friends if you don't watch it. When you receive the message, when you receive the confirmations that these people that are around you are sucking you dry. So how could you have any love left inside of your heart to take care of your kids or your family when you got these people around you that are sucking you dry? Ah, uh, I got nothing left. I'm going down, I'm melting, I'm melting. So feeling safe and feeling secure is very important to me and I think it's very important to every single person. I think that God created us to feel safe, secure, confident, and bold. Your soul maybe has it blocked, but God did not create you for fear and worry and insecurity and a lack of confidence and extreme shyness and extreme timidity. You will become whatever you cultivate, whatever you feed, that's what's going to grow in your life. I'm saved, but I got to change my diet. I'm saved, but I got to change who influences me, who speaks into my life, who feeds my mind, who determines what looks good on me, who determines what I can do and who I am. What's wrong with you is all those people who knew you win. Because if they knew you win, they'll hold you to back then. I got to go. Too many people looking for identity and value and they're looking for it in all the wrong places. They look for it in what they do, who they know, what they own, what they look like. And I think that we need to do our best to look as good as we can. All I can say is take what God's given you and do the best you can with it. But don't be comparing yourself with somebody else. I become confident when I get the right view of other people and I get the right view of myself. It's amazing, right? You ever notice that arrogance requires advertising? But confidence speaks for itself. In fact, insecurity, cynicism, and arrogance, they're all loud. But confidence doesn't even have to speak because confidence isn't based on your words. Confidence is an action. It's an ability to step into the moment and say, I'm not backing down. I'm not quitting. I got my confidence back and I can fulfill. Your tongue is the rudder for your life. It's determining the direction. Next time you're tempted to say something negative about yourself, your future, your finances, zip it up. Don't steer yourself toward defeat. Say not you're too young. Say not you can't accomplish your dreams. God wouldn't have given them to you if you weren't well able. Why are you living a life to impress them? Why are you placing value 
on what they think. Doing all these things to impress them. Why? I'll tell you something right now, man. You need to place value on the people who love you at your worst. Because those are the people who deserve to be there when you're at your best. If you don't heal from emotional wounds, you will bleed on people that had nothing to do with it. How many people are living wounded over how they were raised? A friend that walked away? Instead of letting it go, they replay it in their mind. They wonder why they don't have good relationships. It's because they haven't healed. They're living out of a wounded place. Isn't it amazing how one bad relationship can ruin all of your other relationships? For really being honest tonight, most of the pain in our life, it comes from relationship pain. Some of the hardest things for us to get over, they're attached to people. Despise not the day of small beginnings. And so many people say, when I get a big break, when a big door opens, when somebody notices me, but that is not the key to success. The key to success is to start where you are, right where you are, not when things get better, but start where you are. The only thing worse than one who is inconsistent in applying their self-imposed disciplines is one who has never considered the need or the value of discipline at all. Changing loyalties and shifting frequently from one commitment to another. Leaving behind a trail of broken friendships and unfulfilled promises. All because of a discipline that was either non-existent or imposed so infrequently that it was ineffective. Most of us we're worried about suffering. We're afraid of it. it. When we're suffering and sacrificing, we wonder whether it's worth it. We wonder whether sacrifice or setbacks or suffering is a sign it's not our real dream. See, at the gym, you never think, oh, I'm going through some pain and discomfort. This must be a sign I shouldn't be at the gym. You'd never think that. You have to break it down, suffer and sacrifice for it to grow. When you need motivation yourself, don't look for someone to scream and yell. Don't look for someone else to give you motivation, look at yourself and remind yourself why you are doing what you are doing. This temporary pain, this fight, this is what will make you stronger. That's the key word, discipline, self-discipline, consistent self-discipline. It doesn't really matter how smart you are or how much you know if you don't use it. Better than knowledge is applied knowledge. And once we've applied our knowledge, we must study the results of that process. Get the clutter out. Start letting some of this junk go to make some room for something else. Do that with people. There's some people who's cluttering up your life. They're just holding and occupying the space that somebody useful, positive could be holding that space. You don't even have time to look to see what else is out there because you all have all of these people surrounding you that's not in enabling you to grow. Some of you tonight, you've experienced someone failing. Maybe your mom was never there. Maybe it was a boyfriend who promised you the world but took off. Before you know it, what happens is these failures are holding us back from getting into our future. And these bad relationships are blinding us from all of the good potential relationship. Success is all about building relationships. It's not what you know, it's who you. Some people might not step up when you ask them for help. But guess what? The worst thing can happen to you if somebody refuses you. You didn't have it anyway. Ask people. You never know. Suppose they say yes. That could be the turning factor. You will travel in the direction of your thinking. If you think down, you will go down. If you think up, you will come up. The way you think about your situation determines your reality. The way you think about your family determines your reality. The way you think about yourself. You're not being hurt by the way people think about you. Many of those people are a reflection of how you think about you. 
If you think about yourself a certain way, you will attract people who will expel from your life people who do not line up with how you think about yourself. The mind then becomes the battleground. The mind, Satan is always trying to do battle to take over your mind with warfare. Some of you is fighting your thoughts right now. I want to begin the process of deserving. What would that be? What process should I begin engaging in to deserve good health, to deserve a good relationship? What must I do to begin the process of deserving? There's enough people that are telling us we can't do it, that we're not good enough. Why do we want to tell ourselves that? We know for a fact that thoughts influence actions. We need to get our own self-affirmations. There need to be quiet moments in your bedroom, quiet moments when you're brushing your teeth, that we need to reaffirm, I am the captain of my ship and the master of my fate. If you don't know who you are, you'll discount yourself. Think, oh man, I'm ordinary. Nothing much to offer, nothing special about me. Now life will try to make you feel like you're anything but amazing. Disappointments, betrayals, rejection will try to steal your sense of value. But all through the day, Despite what thoughts are telling you, despite who left you out, you need to remind yourself, I am amazing. I have been wonderfully made. Don't go around feeling ordinary when in fact you're extraordinary. People may try to make you feel average. You don't have much to offer. Are you going to believe what people say about you or believe what God says about you? You're amazing. Have you ever said that to yourself? It has to start on the inside. If people can understand that as long as they don't forgive, they're poisoning themselves. It's like me being mad at somebody who hurt me that's out having a good time and don't even care that I'm mad. That doesn't hurt them. It's pointless. It's like, okay, you hurt me, but now if I'm going to hate you, then I'm letting you continue to hurt me. And you're controlling my life, and I'm not going to do that. It is your values, it is your ethics, it is how you make choices that get you promoted. It is not your strength, it is not your talent, it is not how you fight, it is not how you draw, it is not your intellectualism, it is your values. So that when you are backed up against the wall and you have to make a decision, true leadership is how you make decisions in the moment. What do you care the most about, being seen or being connected? Doors of opportunity are open to those who continually knock. So we don't find open doors of opportunity because we need them. We find them because we deserve them. Only those who knock deserve to find an open. It says, if you search, you will find. Finding is reserved for the searchers because they deserve it. Now, at first they may have needed it, but they now know that just needing it is not sufficient. The reason why you're going to be blessed with good ideas is because you've come searching. For those who search, they will find answers. To find a good idea, you must go looking, if you wish to find. Rarely does a good idea interrupt you. So we get not what we need, but we get what we deserve. It says if you ask, someone has an answer. If you keep asking, the answers belong to you. So we don't get what we need, we get what we deserve. Living in mourning is going to keep the new doors from opening. You have to heal so you can see the new relationships, the new opportunities. And the quicker you let things go, the easier it is. Your time is valuable. That's a distraction trying to get you off course. This is a verse you must remember all your life. It says, man's days are determined. That means you don't decide how long you live. Your life is on a time. Extreme environments will turn you into a different creature. Extreme environments will make you move differently. It can happen in the midst of a dark depression, even in the middle of a gut-wrenching heartbreak, in the midst of unimaginable loss, it can happen. My question to you is, what's about to change inside of you that's gonna make people think you can defy gravity? It takes discipline to plan. It takes discipline to execute our plan. And it takes discipline to change either our plan or our method of executing that plan if the results are poor, it takes discipline to ponder the value of someone else's opinion when our pride and our arrogance leads us to believe that we are the only ones with the answers. What are your expectations? What do you expect to get from life? What do you expect to get from your relationships? What is your ideal day? 
What is it that you expect from this journey that you're involved in? People that have a strong sense of self-approval, they have high expectations for themselves and from others. I must be great. I'm pretty. I must be great. I have this validation that comes from stuff is never God. I'm really rubbing the grain. Go with me or you still with me? You can't wear a watch until who made it. You step on the runway. What are you wearing? You got everybody's name on you but your own. So no one is better or less when it comes to time and change. You become what you are by how you use your 24. You have no idea how strong you are. You're not in this thing life by yourself. But one of the things that I know about this thing called life, recognize what had happened, the role that I played in it, I had to keep it moving. Got to keep it moving. Each of us must live off the fruit of his thoughts in the future. Because what you think today and tomorrow, next month and next year, will mold your life and determine your future. You're guided by your mind. You have built-in greatness. You have built-in power to handle whatever life throws at you. And life is going to be throwing a lot of stuff. Nobody's going to be spared. That's why Victor Frankl called it unavoidable suffering. But suffering is a choice because you can suffer or you can choose to do whatever you need to do, overcome whatever you are stuck in right now. Never underestimate the power of influence and associations, and never underestimate the power of your own consistent self-discipline. Sleep late, show up late, waiting is always easier than acting. Imagine what life would be like if we didn't have to make our bed in the morning. Wouldn't it be fascinating if we didn't have to do these things? What do you suppose would become of us? You're right, not much. One of the great distractions of chasing our dreams is this thing that goes off in our head as we're negotiating the price we're paying. Is it getting too high? Is it too much? And you'll have people in your ear, it's too big a sacrifice. You're going through too much. It distracts all your focus. You can't be executing and negotiating simultaneously. So negotiate it now. Negotiate it with me now. What are you willing to pay? For me, when I'm after something big, as long as it's legal, ethical, and moral, I'll sacrifice everything else. Greatness is not income. On the other hand, poverty is equated in, to greatness in a lot of people, that, that if they have nothing, they must be great. And neither one is true. You're not great because you're poor. You're not great because you're rich. Your greatness is not based upon your income. As ye sow, so shall you reap. It's the realization that your limitations are self-imposed and that the opportunities for you today are enormous beyond belief. To use all your courage to force yourself to think positively on your own problem. To let your marvelous mind think about your goal from all possible angles. There's some stuff you need to clean out and clear out in your life. Some activities, some relationships, some things, some events, some wrong thoughts, some misconceptions mental, physical, emotional, spiritual rubble in your life that you need to clear out. What's the rubble in your life? It's the stuff that keeps tripping you up.